Okay, g'day all. Let's make a calculator. So last time we made a token class, and this time we want to make a tokenize method, which splits the string that the user types in the expression box into tokens of that class that we just made. The first thing that we should do is add a few buttons. So I'm going to add some bracket buttons, since uh, I forgot to add those last time. Alrighty, I'm going to rename them. I might rename them BTN uh, left brace and BTN right brace. Alrighty, so I'll add those, and where's this going? Click BTN digit click. Alright, it's coming here to digit click where it's going to print the text of the button to the expression window, which is exactly what we want for the brackets. Uh, it's not really just BTN digit click anymore. <laughs> you know, brackets are involved as well, but that event can handle the uh, bracket buttons too, so I'll just leave it how it is. Uh, if you come down to your equals click, we can, uh, the equals click event, we can start writing our tokenize method. Uh, what is it going to be? TXT output. TXT output dot text. Alrighty, so this will be the main method for today, this tokenize method, and after that we'll have the shunting yard algorithm. We'll show the shunting yard method and probably the um, calculate expression method once we've got it in reverse polish. But you can get rid of all of the other nonsense in BTN button click, that's not really needed. Alrighty, so we'll write this tokenize method. It's going to return a bunch of tokens from a string. So, uh, token eyes. String split for token eyes. Okay, so I like to do this a bit of a slow way. If you're doing this, if you're if you're writing out the shunting out algorithm for a game or some scripting language, you're probably going to want to do all of this stuff while the level loads, kind of thing. You don't want to be doing this on the fly, like mid frame or something like that. It's just going to be too slow. Uh, you don't even want to be doing the shunting out algorithm mid frame. Yeah, you want to do all of this stuff when the level is loading. Anyway, split for tokenize, so let's just Okay, this is a slow way of doing it, but if the user has typed too many spaces or too few spaces between uh tokens we need to know. So what I'm going to do is make sure there's exactly one space between all of the operators and the brackets. And while str contains any double spaces, str equals str dot replace double spaces with a single space. split on space. Okay, so all this method does is make sure there's exactly one space between each of the tokens, then it splits the string up into separate little token strings. So every string uh, in this split array just here of strings is going to be a different token. So list uh, token. Um, oops, token t equals, what do we call it, I think, token dot, so this is the method that we called last time, this um, string to token method that we wrote last time, and tokens dot add t. Tokens to array. Okay, so that would be all that we've got to do for tokenize, except for that little point about uh, binary 
minus versus unary negative, uh, we've got to differentiate between the two, and we can do it here. Uh, if if s is the what's not going to be character is it? If s is the minus symbol, uh, you could do this for positive as well, like positive versus plus uh, as well, if you want. But if it's the minus symbol, we need to decide whether it's binary or unary, and we can do that at this point. Uh, there's a few conditions under which it would be the unary operator uh, as opposed to the binary one, and we tell by whatever the previous token was. So whatever the previous token we read was, uh, that's going to tell us whether this is unary or binary. Uh, for a start, if there is no previous token, then it's unary. So if your if your uh, expression starts with the minus symbol, then it means negative. Uh, so if tokens dot count equals zero, uh, but there are another there are another couple of ways. So I, I I can never remember this. I just uh just wrote it down before. But if it's uh, if the previous token is a left brace or an operator, it's also unary. Good. So what we need to do is add a getter to our token class. Uh, we need for our token class to be able to return its uh, token type. So, so let's go public and get token type. Now, what am I doing? Ah. <laughs> That's better. Yeah, we need a getter. So just add your getter to your token class. And if the previous token, which is uh, tokens and tokens dot count minus one dot get token type, if the previous token is a make your enums public. Hold on a second. Make your enums public. <laughs> if the previous token is a left brace or uh, the previous token is an operator, then what we've actually got is unary negative. We haven't got binary positive, so we've got to change everything around in the token. Let's have a look at what we've got to change. Um, alrighty, so we don't need to change the token type. Uh, I'm going to change the symbol. I'm going to make up a new symbol for unary. Uh, we do need to change the associativity, the precedence, and the parameter count. So I might just copy these at the top and make another little getter sort of method. A little setter sort of method, I mean. So public. Uh, that's a void as well. Uh, it takes a char symbol. Uh, it takes an associativity. There's no way I'm going to try and type that out again. ASOC. It takes an int for precedence and it takes an int for param count. Okay, this dot symbol equals symbol. And this dot ASOC equals ASOC. This dot, what was the other one? Precedence equals pro. Rec and this dot parameter count equals param count. Okay, so that method will let us change the operator that we've just read from binary to unary negative if we need to. And we do right here, so we'll just call that method set values. So the symbol I might use be an underscore, I guess. No real reason. Uh, the associativity is right. Yeah, I got that from here. So if you go to Google or Bing or Xquick or whatever you use for a, a search engine and you type something like associativity of C++, uh, you'll get a good list of the uh, associativity and uh, precedence that C++ uses. Uh, so this page is pretty good. I found cppreference.com. Why is my thing a hand still? Oh, it's better. <laughs> Who cares? Uh, right here is what we're looking at. Unary plus and minus. So we're not doing unary plus, but you can if you want. Uh, unary minus has right associativity. Uh, the other thing that you should note is that uh, these people here that wrote this page out use lower numbers for higher precedence. 
so we kind of want the opposite in our calculator. Uh, but what's important to note is that what they're saying is uh, unary minus has to happen before multiplication and division. So in our calculator, that's going to mean that it has a higher uh, precedence. So if we just go associativity right, and the precedence of multiplication and division was 20. So I might make this 30, and it takes one parameter. Uh, so all we're saying there with that precedence is that if you've got something like 4 multiplied by negative 3, you want the negative to be applied to the 3 before the multiplication happens. Yeah, so it's got a higher precedence than multiplication. But that should just about be it. So what I might do is put a breakpoint on tokens. Uh, I think we've done our tokenized method. Yeah, I think that's going to work. We do have to test it out, though. So I'll run, and I'll see if it can tokenize an expression properly. We'll type something like, oh, I don't know, maybe 85 plus... Actually, I might clear that. I might do 85 minus... Uh, 87 divided by negative 62. Okay, so I'm going to hit equals in a second, but uh, I want it to come out with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 tokens, and I want this first occurrence of minus to be binary, and I want the second one to be unary. Let's see what it does. Fingers crossed. Uh, Okay, I don't know what all those are. Oh, locals. Those are locals. Yeah, we're not watching locals. Can we just put a watch on this? Alrighty, so tokens is null. Oh, this is going to take a long, long time. Hold on a second, I'll find a faster way to do it. So I have to hit step into because of my screen recorder. What is it doing? Maybe I'll just hit stop when I get a chance. What is it? It's gone crazy. What in the world? To here. That's good. Let's just hit play. Okay. <laughs> okay, now tokens will be the um, yeah, array we're looking for. Let's see what it did. Sorry about that. I don't know what it was what it was doing. I hit F eleven a few times and it was taking its time, but who cares, it's over now, we don't have to worry about it. Um, it's decided that there's eight tokens, which is a good sign. Uh, it's decided that the first token is 85. It's a number. The second one is binary uh, minus. Very good. And what was the other one? Alright, that's a division operator. Yeah, yeah. Ah, and the second occurrence of the minus symbol, it's decided, was unary negative, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so I think I think it's all good, but we won't really know until uh, we've finished doing the shunting yard and the uh, calculate expression uh, methods, which we'll add next shoot and probably the shoot after, depending on how long it takes. But um, then we'll really know how we've gone with our tokenized method. Anyway, until then, see you later. Thanks for watching.